Welcome. Before we can dive into any gases, we'll have to learn about pressure. Pressure is a phenomenon of fluids like liquids and gases. You are experiencing atmospheric pressure right now, and it's a good thing you are, or your lungs wouldn't fill with air when you inhale. Just erase that uh, blank spot. The physics definition of pressure is force divided by area. So if we have a weight sitting atop a large platform, that platform exerts less pressure on the ground than the same weight atop a small platform. The origin of pressure here on Earth is the gravitational weight of all the gases in the atmosphere. You are sitting at the bottom of a gaseous ocean 100 miles deep. The 100 miles of gases above you are kept close to the Earth due to the Earth's gravity, which has the effect of pushing down on everything around us. Luckily, the things inside us are also pushing back on the atmosphere with an equal amount of force. Did you know that atmospheric pressure is lower at the top of a mountain? This is because there is less air above you pushing down. Imagine an empty metal can. Well, it's not truly empty if it's full of air. The weight of the atmosphere is pushing in on the outsides of the container, but the air inside the container is pushing back with the exact same amount of pressure. That is, until we hook it up to a vacuum. As the vacuum pumps air out of the container, the air inside loses its power to push back on the atmosphere. Eventually, the pressure on the outside is too much and the container will collapse. When this can collapsed, it's important to recognize that it was the atmosphere pushing on the outside that caused the metal container to collapse. It is not the inside air pulling on the metal walls. There is no such thing as pulling when it comes to gases. Even when you're using a vacuum cleaner, the vacuum cleaner does not pull on the gases from outside. Instead, the vacuum cleaner has a fan that pushes internal gases out and the atmospheric pressure pushes back in through the vacuum cleaner hose, bringing dust, dirt, and any misplaced jewelry with it. A barometer is used to measure atmospheric pressure. The first barometers were made of liquid mercury upturned in a tube. The atmospheric pressure pushes on the surface of mercury, which in turn pushes back on the mercury in the tube. The height of the mercury, which remains aloft, is directly related to the pressure. However, no one really uses mercury barometers anymore. A manometer is a device used to measure the pressure of a contained gas. It works similarly to a barometer in which gas pressure pushes on a column of mercury. The difference in height between the mercury columns is directly related to the pressure of the gas. But no one really uses mercury manometers anymore either. We have much simpler instruments that give us a readout of the pressure anytime we want. We have many, many units to measure pressure. The official SI unit for pressure is the Pascal, but Pascals are so tiny that kilopascals are more common. However, the most common unit to measure pressure is with the atmosphere, abbreviated ATM. One atmosphere is the amount of atmospheric pressure encountered on Earth at sea level. On an exam, you will be given this table, and you can convert from one unit of pressure to another via a one-step dimensional analysis.